Great. So I'm very excited to be here today. Um, same as Alex, I'm working on an open source medical device, uh, implanted medical device, and we share a lot of the same issues, um, prides of being a part of this, this world. Uh, so thank you, Alex, for really giving a great background on why open source medical devices can work and the challenges we're kind of facing. I'm going to speak uh, more specifically on our project uh, and what our device is. Um, so we are a group called Cosmic. It's currently, we'll say, a project, but we're forming a uh, startup out of it. Uh, what this stands for is Cleveland. So as Alex mentioned, uh, I work in the U.S., and so a lot of this is U.S. and FDA informed. Um, we're creating an open source um, modular implant and so i'll talk about that a bit more but modular meaning there are different components to it that can be uh, plugged together in different orientations and we are trying to create a community out of this um, so cosmic is an nih funded pro project in the usa uh, is specifically through a program called spark um, and there's a specific mechanism in Spark called Hornet, which funds both Cosmic and the Open Nerve platform uh, to develop open source neural technologies. Um, so Spark has a great portal for sharing open research data. However, they've decided to expand this through our device projects to physical tools for researchers. Um, so we are focused mostly on human clinical devices and figuring out how to help other people get to that same level. Um, a few differences are is that our group Cosmic is taking a previously closed device and making it open source while the open nerf platform is being developed um, from the start to be open. Um, so what our, our system is, is it's a fully implantable device. So when somebody has is somebody has this implanted, it is very hard to tell. There are, besides when you have to charge the implanted battery, uh, there's nothing being worn by the person. Uh, you would hardly even know. Um, as you can see in the photo here, there are different components that are wired together through a physical network uh, in the body. Um, this device has an FDA approval in the United States uh, to be an investigational device, an IDE. And so that is an important part of the regulatory background that Alex has mentioned. Uh, we are at a certain level of approval, um, but we are allowed to be in humans with our device, and that is the most important thing. Uh, and we want to help other people get there through now this open source initiative. Uh, currently, there are eight full systems in humans, um, and that has been six years now since the first was implanted. So real quick, what that looks like is we typically use them for hand function in people with spinal cord injury. However, we can do anything throughout the body with our investigational device exemption. Uh, so here in the diagram at the center of the slide, you can see uh, we show some modules in the hand. There would be 12 stimulating electrodes in the arm that can be coordinated for strength and timing to help somebody uh, do different types of hand grafts, whether it be pinching something to pick up, say, like uh, a piece of popcorn or grab a cup or pinch a key and twist it uh, at their home, uh, different functional grafts like that. We can use recording uh, input from muscles to create logic signals or graded response signals to increase the strength of contractions. Uh, we can also place these modules in the legs or in the core to help with standing. Um, so essentially, we our vocabulary is remote modules are the stimulating or recording smaller modules, and the power module is where the communications uh, and the rechargeable battery are housed. Everything is connected with a network cable. Um, currently, it's being used in people who have high-level injuries in their neck, uh, spinal cord injuries that lead to paralysis and loss of hand use. Here you can see one of our participants is able to activate the system, grab a glass, raise it to their mouth and drink, and set it down in a controlled fashion. Um, so this is one of our eight participants. Uh, we have an ongoing clinical trial showing hand function in specific uh, with other clinical studies to come. 
Um, also under the Cosmic Project, as well as making the original system open source, we are looking to develop new modules. So we currently have four new modules with function specific activities uh, in mind. Uh, so I can talk a little bit more about these later, but um, these are collaborators who we still feel are kind of internal to our group. Um, so they will all be making these throughout this three year grant, uh, releasing them open source as well as the system, but just on a bit of a different timeline. Uh, and they serve as an example for people to be in the external community later, um, developing their own devices as well. Um, so we're, we're looking towards walking, uh, rather than just standing, uh, pain management and peripheral nerves as well as brain computer interface. So reading brain signals uh, to then actuate stimulation elsewhere in the body. Um, so why, why open source for this device? The first thing I kind of want to mention is our device is more, or our group started more as a clinical group focused on purely spinal cord injury. And that has been proven to be hard to commercialize. In the United States, the amount of people with spinal cord injury is much, much lower than many other medical indications, such as diabetes, pain, um, stroke. Um, so it is much harder to make money off a device like this. Um, when we realized that we could make this open source and spread this technology, not only to help people with spinal cord injury, but for other people to adopt it and start applying it to those larger indications, um, the benefits completely outweigh, um, you know, all of these challenges that we're trying to sort through. Uh, we, we feel that open source will lower the barrier to device development for researchers and for clinicians and help get new devices to market sooner. Um, the modular aspect that I've talked about as well um, is great for customization. So customizing in the sense of using in different places around the body and being able to stream different modalities of stimulation um, and sensing together. Um, another big issue in the spinal cord injury world is in across all clinical device research is device abandonment. So when a clinical study is over, what happens to the device that is left in the human? Um, and should a startup implant a lot of devices into a study group, what happens when that startup or company goes bankrupt and is not able to support those anymore? So we feel that creating an open source community out of this device and building the literacy on knowing how to use the device and platform will help fight that de device abandonment. Um, now, the biggest thing about open source is hopefully creating uh, shared strength in this community for referencing biocompatibility and risks. So when a device is put in a human, you have to know, is it going to be compatible with tissues in the body? And this is a major part of regulatory approval, uh, as well as uh, documenting all possible risks. And um, we feel that by creating transparency around this, that this will help people get through regulatory uh, bound barriers faster um, and more informed as well. Um, and then personally, I'm interested in open source and, and learning from the GOSH, GOSH community how we can create equity and openness uh, in human health. Um, I feel like uh, we are very contrarian to the major medical device, implantable medical device companies. Um, and I'd like to see how we can compete with them. Um, the biggest thing here in open source is sharing everything. Uh, and as Alex mentioned, it's not just posting a bunch of files online, especially when it comes to an implanted device. Um, people have to know um, all of the communications we've had with the FDA. So we've started posting our feedback from the FDA to our website, which I'll mention later. Uh, we've got all of our design controls, meaning uh, requirements and testing and validation going up on our website and GitHub. We're going to be sharing all the fabrication, all of our development tool chains. Um, and another thing about open source is going through all of our reference projects, 
uh, like Alex has mentioned some and looking at other groups like open BCI and seeing what types of tools they use on GitHub and for their websites is, is so helpful to us. Um, being able to have these shared resources or figure out what others are using is such an important part to, to our project. So we hope to be that for others. Uh, currently, we're looking at doing different licenses for the different components of our project. Uh, with the software being the MIT license for, we have a lot of embedded C code, uh, and then our hardware being um, under the CERN open hardware license. And we're, we're looking to make things as permissive as possible. Um, looking forward to the future, what we really want is this not to just be a, a large piece of tech that is hard to work with, but a platform. Uh, so we already have development boards and a human grade system. However, we want to flesh out a better um, software development kit so that when researchers are given our open source de designs on GitHub, that they are better able to interact with them and create their new neuromodulation therapy. Uh, we also are looking to have a low cost system. Uh, this is going to be for use in large animal models to be able to test new therapies or combination therapies before they are done in humans. Um, and when, when we are doing this animal study, we do not need the full human grade biocompatible system that is going to last for 50 years. Uh, we're looking to do this out of cheaper materials with biocompatible 3D printable materials. Uh, so we, we really feel like this will help people go from their bench top uh, to, to validating a therapy in an animal model and then uh, using it clinically in humans. So our intended user for an, a medical device like this is also, again, like Alex has mentioned, it's not necessarily a biohacker or a tinker in the open source community, but it is a neuromodulation researcher, whether that be an engineer or some type of clinician, physician, uh, who is looking to um, study a new therapy for a new indication, whether that be across the field of pain or incontinence or bowel you or bowel function um, uh, and as well as startups. And we've identified that a lot of startups need preliminary data um, to, to develop their own therapy or device. However, they have to start first with developing their own implantable pulse generator because they don't have any way to get their hands on one from a competitor. Uh, so being able to use an open source platform to collect preliminary data to validate should they go through with developing this therapy or device uh, shows to, promises to be a major resource. Um, another thing that I've been looking at as well is educational use. Um, sorry, I didn't finish that sentence on that point. Um, but for high level university courses um, across biomedical engineering. So um, typically in an intro to engineering class at a university or high school, you start using Arduino and you kind of learn off that platform. What I'd love to see is um, a well fleshed out SDK and development board from Cosmic being used to help teach um, people in university courses. And that also helps them develop kind of a workforce for um, researchers at that university who want to use our system as well. Um, so using the development board, you can do percutaneous testing, aka implanting electrodes through the skin, uh, but not being fully implanted. And you can test new or combination therapies. Uh, what we also would like to see is people being able to develop new modules just as we're doing right now. So creating a, a kind of a blueprint for how people can do that. Um, and we'd just love for anyone to repurpose our me mechanical design or our printed circuit boards, and we just hope to be a research for others. Um, kind of the last part of my presentation is talking about uh, sustainability. Um, so I mentioned earlier, we are forming a corporation out of Cosmic Research Group. So um, our research funding uh, currently ends in August 2025. So how are we going to make sure that none of this is abandoned after the, that grant is over? Um, so we formed a Cosmic Incorporated, and this is a benefit corporation in our state in the U.S. So what this means is we can make decisions that don't necessarily 
benefit the profit of shareholders. So we can make decisions that al allow us to forget about the money for a second and think about the open source community as well as the people who have these devices in their labs or in their bodies. Um, so Cosmic Inc. will serve to maintain those open source resources, but also start to develop um, um, educational resources for the regulatory pathways, uh, for how people can develop devices into our system, um, as well as I'll show in a diagram in a second, how to get the physical systems uh, to researchers and startups. And then if we could also as well do some contracted development uh, for them as well. So what Cosmic Inc. kind of looks like right now is the outer circle um, where you can see these different categories. Uh, so the blue items on the left and bottom on the outside kind of show what are no cost and will be free open source. Uh, so that's all the software, all of the blueprints, all of the fabrication, how to build it, how to use it, uh, as well as all of our communications with the FDA. And then we feel that Cosmic Inc. can become a sustainable model by selling physical systems. Um, of course, anyone can recreate them, um, but we do have the partnerships with the manufacturers who are able to create these as devices to be sterilized and put in humans. Uh, that is a valuable knowledge and connection that we want to maintain and help others through. Um, and then uh, as well as provide customer support and education. And so we feel that there will be opportunities for some of that to be consultant work and some of it to be community resources. Um, so you can learn more at the link I sent in the chat. Uh, so our web website went live. Um, you can also follow us on LinkedIn. We're starting to be more active there, posting updates. Uh, but our big date is this August 31st, 2024, is our milestone for having all of our open source documentation for the system posted. Uh, so that's going to be the PCBs, mechanical design, and software for the, the baseline system that is currently in humans. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much. I'm really excited to uh, talk with all of you. I saw a lot of names in the chat that I recognize from the forum. Um, so I'm really looking forward to growing our project through the through the Gosh community. Thank you.